appreciate all of our singers and our musicians that use their talents for the Lord. And then those of us who are not talented still trying to use it for the Lord. We endeavor to, to glorify Him. Whether we have a beautiful voice like Sister Diane or a voice like mine, we still use it to give glory to God, to honor Him. Now, I love it when singers sing. But I love it when folks that may not be the greatest singers sing for the glory of God. When they we lift them up. And we had a guy in our church years ago when I was a kid. And he's, he's gone on to be with the Lord. He, he actually backslid for several years but came back to the Lord right before he'd passed. But he was, he was a fireball for the Lord. That guy could not sing for nothing in the world. Man, his singing ability... Uh, I don't think he knew of A, B, C, D, B flat, you know, kind of like me. I joke with Sister Gilda when I go to sing. I said, I'll be in the key of Z today. And uh, he was off the scale. But when he sung, power of God would move in that place because there was such an anointing, such a passion, such a desire coming from him to, to sing and to honor and to glorify God because he wasn't up there for people to hear how beautiful his voice was but it was like I said earlier that song had spoke to him so he wanted to share that message and song and that that same gentleman uh, did not wait for a pastor to offer to him a pulpit to preach from he would go down downtown Jacksonville to the park stand up on a park bench and just preach the gospel sing those same songs that he would sing in church and he just had a desire a desire to serve the Lord so if you have a desire to serve the Lord, you're going to serve the Lord. If you have a desire to, to do something for the work of the Lord, there'll be no excuse of why you did not do it. And I'm thankful for those that don't make excuses, but they make preparations, amen? And they, they get up here and they sing for the glory of God and, and they do it and prepare themselves to, to the fullest of their ability, whether it's a lot of ability or limited ability, we do it with all of our heart and all that we have, and I'm thankful for that this morning. Turn with me two places, um, Daniel chapter 3 for one. We're going to look there in Daniel chapter 3 in a little bit, but I'm going to take my text in 1 Peter chapter 3. So Daniel chapter 3 and 1 Peter chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 and 1 Peter chapter 3. We had a good youth service yesterday at Lenox Avenue, Glad I was glad I went. I wanted to get back and try to, to touch both ends of the spectrum yesterday to be for the youth service and nursing home, but I didn't make it back quite in time for the nursing home. And I was even ready because I knew Sister Gill would probably ask me to say something. I was ready to say something, to share a word there with them, but did not just didn't make it back in time. We had a wonderful service. And Brother Elijah, uh, love Brother Elijah, love his ministry. And uh, he, he preached yesterday for that youth service, and he preached on... Daniel chapter 1, and then he got over here into Daniel chapter 3 a little bit. So those, those that were with us yesterday has got a little bit of groundwork, a little bit of background of what I'm going to share this morning. But i got a question, and I want to ask you this morning, is we're in a year of revelation. And that question this morning is, are you ready for revelation? Are you ready to receive a revelation. That would be where you say yes or no. That's, that's a question. Are you ready to receive a revelation from God? Let me, let me get more detail. Maybe you didn't understand the question. Maybe you thought I was going to, hey, God said this. Or, no. I'm not coming to be a prophet to say, you know, like the one guy said, you shall live if you don't die. No, I'm not to come and declare anything this morning. I'm just simply asking you, are you ready for a revelation from God in this year of revelation. Are you ready for your breakthrough? If you've not received one yet, but you say, I need my breakthrough and I'm ready for my breakthrough. Are you ready for your breakthrough? So that, That's the question that I want to ask you, whether it's breakthrough, whether it's revelation, whether it's God's will, God's direction, whatever purpose, whatever you want to insert, whatever it is that you may be ready for, the question that I'm asking in this message title this morning is this, are you ready? 1 Peter 3, 15. If you're ready, Peter tells us here what we need to do. 
Sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Not only this morning do I want us to be able to answer the question of are we ready, but I want us to be able to answer I'm always ready. I'm always ready to hear from God. I'm always ready to talk to God. I'm always ready to talk about God. It's been said about me over the years that He'll preach and drop the hat and He'll drop the hat. That's the way I want to be. I want to be instant in season, out of season. Are you ready to, to do something for the Lord? Are you ready to get your answer from the Lord? But what I really want to focus on this morning in this year of revelation, are you ready for a revelation? Are you ready to receive your revelation? If you are, can you just say amen? Because I wasn't sure. Amen. Father, we love you today. Lord, they amen me that they're ready. And I know, Father God, that you're ready to give exceeding abundantly above all. Lord, that you're willing to speak to hearts that are willing to listen. Lord, you're willing to sanctify the heart of the believer who wants to be sold out to you. But one that says, I'm ready to live for you. I'm ready to serve you. I'm ready to hear from you. But God, not only am I ready to hear from you, I'm ready to do what you say do. I'm ready to be what you say to be. And I just pray, Heavenly Father, this morning that you would help me and anoint me to preach to a people today that they can leave here. They're always ready to give an answer to every man that asketh for a reason of the hope that lies within them with meekness and with fear. And I pray, Father God, that you would just speak to our hearts today. Pray, God, that you would just draw us ever closer to your will today, your purpose today. Pray, God, that you would just manifest your divine purpose in our lives this morning, God. Draw us ever closer to you as our desire, our will to be surrendered to your will, our way to be yielded to your way, our purpose yielded to your purpose. It's all about you today, God. And I pray that you'd anoint me to deliver this message that you've placed heavy upon my heart this week. And knowing, God, that he'll find good ground. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Are you ready? Just look at your neighbor this morning and ask them. Maybe you didn't hear their answer. Just look at them and ask them. Are you ready? In this year of revelation, are you ready? Uh, there's a TV preacher by the name of T.D. Jake several years ago. He would tell them, reach over and touch your neighbor and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. I don't want somebody to have to reach over and tell me to get ready. I want to be able to look back at them and say, I'm already ready. How many know that song that we read out of the sing out of the red back hymnal? I sing it a little different than most, but that song says, I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl. That's a wonderful thing, but I, I sing it a little different. I'm already ready. I, I, I want to stay ready. I want to be ready. And there is a hope that lies within me since the day that I knelt down at that altar and made my call and election sure and repented and, and took an about face from sin and got myself ready. Uh, but I also know that every day I've got to stay ready. And I've got to be in that place because there's going to be times uh, that there's going to be a need to present to, to someone and they're going to say, uh, how do you have hope when it seems like you're surrounded by hopelessness? How do you have joy uh, when it's not a joyful situation? Uh, and it's in those moments that you've got to, Peter is telling us, uh, you've got to be ready to give them an answer. Always ready uh, to give an answer for that hope that lies within you. What is this peace? Uh, what is this joy? What is this gladness? What is this smile all about? How do you have that in this situation? How can you in the time or the struggle or the conflict have that? Oh, because I am ready. Paul said whether it's to be abased, whether it's to go to the highest mountain, to the lowest valley, the psalmist said, no matter where I'm at, Paul said this. He said, I've learned in whatever state I am therewith to be 
content. I found that to be true, whether it's been a state of confusion, or it's been a state of chaos, or a state of sorrow, or whether it's been the state of Texas, or the state of Florida, however you want to look at it, and know that wherever I'm at, wherever I go, whatever I go through, I'm ready for whatever the Lord wants for me, is what they're challenging us here in the Word of God with. And I told you we're going to look in Daniel chapter 3 this morning. And I want to look at three young men, three Hebrew boys. We know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was not their real names. That was their given names. But we read, Brother Elijah shared it wonderfully yesterday. But we see in the first two chapters of Daniel how... They, they're taken, there's this, this captivity that is brought, and they're, they're seized, and the king and his men, they come, and they, in these first two chapters, they come, and they bring us to the place that they have this group of young people. They had taken their, all the things from their homes, and their place of worship, and all, all of those items, that was not enough, as the king came into the palace, Nebuchadnezzar had come and he had sent his people to take them captive. But he was looking for a certain group. He didn't just come in and take all the young people. But he came in and he took a certain group of young people. Young people, it said that they were a group of wise young people. And he took them from Jerusalem and, and took them. They were ones that were able to obtain knowledge and understanding and were smart Maybe he looked at, went to the local high school and seen all of those on the honor society. I don't know how he did it, but they, they picked out choice young men. Choice men that was well favored and, and, and well capable. And they took them into captivity for the purpose to train them to stand in the king's palace. Not only to stand there and to be in the king's palace, but they were training them to be his royal, to attend to his royal person. They were training him, them to preside in the affairs of the king. Their desire was to take these young men, these young people, and, and to twist their devotion. To take and to, to feed that knowledge. They had a hunger for knowledge. Uh, and they were going to feed this knowledge with the, the pagan ways and, the, and, the, and Nebuchadnezzar's ways and the, the affairs of the king to be sold out to the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. To be totally committed to, to whatever the king said do. To kiss his ring. To bow down. Whatever the king said do. That they uh, would be knowledgeable. Uh, and and they, they would receive the wisdom. Uh, they were hungry for wisdom. They were going to feed them wisdom. Uh, and not only that. Uh, that he would take and they would partake of the king's meat. Well, in Daniel chapter 2, I believe it is. We find that Daniel says, wait a minute. We don't want to eat that. We don't want to eat the king's meat. We, we, we've just been raised that we don't do that. And so he went to uh, the one that was over them uh, and, and said, we would prefer uh, not to eat the king's meat. Uh, and he said, matter of fact, we'll just eat uh, pulse, which is beans. Yes, we'll just take that, uh, and, and that'll be fine with us, and we can live off that. Uh, and and I, I'm just paraphrasing here. Uh, the guy said, you'll get me in a lot of trouble if I let you eat just that, uh, because you won't have strength and you won't have ability. Uh, this diet plan is laid out for you. Uh, not only is it a, a plan... Uh, for your knowledge and for your understanding, for you to learn the ways of Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. But you've got to learn to live on Nebuchadnezzar's diet plan and the food that he's laid out. Sound familiar? That the world thinks that we've got to go by their plan of action. And so here's, here's how it's laid out. You're now a part of this kingdom and you've been brought into this place and this is the menu and this is the, the, this is the role. This is what time you get up. This is what time you go to bed and this is what you do in between and this is what you eat for breakfast and this is what you eat for lunch and you this is what you eat for dinner and Daniel's like yeah I'm a smart guy I understand that but this is what I'm telling you we are not going to eat of the king's meat because we don't eat that that's been offered to idols and we don't just we don't do that here's what the deal is give us 10 days if you feed them whatever you want to feed them let us eat just pulse. 
He said, and then you can measure it and look at it, and I guarantee you, the end, everything's going to be okay. Sure enough, it was. Their countenance was better than anybody else's. Their strength was better than that that was laid out for them to partake of. So this, this began to, to cause Daniel to get elevated uh, in, in the kingdom, to be looked up to. Uh, and we understand this uh, because in uh, chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3, we just find three of those boys. They, they had watched and they had prayed with Daniel. Daniel had told them, uh, came to them during this encounter and said, pray with me, this is the situation. Uh, they prayed with him and they stood with him. Uh, now Daniel's promoted to another level, uh, but these three young men are still out there uh, amongst that group. Uh, and I love the way Brother Elijah put it uh, yesterday. He said, that king looked out there across that crowd uh, of those that were supposed to be bowing down, uh, or his servant didn't. They looked out, uh, and as they looked out across that crowd, every Everything looked good. Uh, and maybe he's doing like this. Because they said, uh, when you hear the sound of the music, the psaltery, the harp, all of these things, uh, and you see that image of Nebuchadnezzar that's set up, uh, you're to bow down. Uh, and as he looked across that vast crowd of however many that they had there, uh, and they looked, Brother Elijah put it this way, he said it kind of went like this. Never heard it put that way. And that was pretty good. And everything looked fine up to that point. And everything looked fine after that point. But those three were messing up the plan. Those three young men were messing up the plan. Those three men that they had named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, we find it tells us that these uh, young people that were here, these brilliant boys, uh, that they were standing when the king said they should be bowing. In the first part of this chapter, everyone who was gathered uh, was commanded to bow to the image, and they did not bow. Uh, but in all of their efforts, as they look here, uh, and they're trying to figure out what did we do wrong? Why are they standing when they should be bowed? We've taken and we've instilled with them, and we've pushed in them hours upon hours upon hours uh, 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 of the doctrines of the kingdom, uh, uh, of what it was to be. They've endeavored to brainwash. Uh, they, they endeavored to change them. Uh, they, they've tried to feed their knowledge with the knowledge of Nebuchadnezzar and the kingdom. Uh, and in all of their efforts to train them and transform these young men uh, from the religion of their fathers uh, to, 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 the, to that of now of Nebuchadnezzar, their conquerors, uh, there was one thing that they did not consider. Uh, they considered their knowledge. They considered their desire for knowledge. Uh, they fed that desire for knowledge. They considered the diet. Uh, they considered all of these things. Uh, but one thing that they did not consider uh, was their readiness or their desire See, they had something, Sister Gilda, that went further uh, than intellect. Uh, they, when they picked them out, choice young men, uh, what they saw in them was a, a, a choice uh, young men. As we said last week, uh, that men, uh, that, that, that are just men, have children uh, that are blessed. Uh, and obviously some of these young people uh, stood there blessed and favored. Uh, and when the enemy saw something that attracted them, uh, listen, the enemy is still attracted uh, to choice young people uh, that have knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Uh, listen, the devil gets excited uh, when he sees a young person uh, that can quote the Word of God. I guarantee you he does. What do you mean, Pastor? The devil gets excited uh, when he sees a young person uh, that's hungry to know more about the Lord. What do you mean? Because he knows if he can get their attention, take them into captivity uh, and bring them into that kingdom uh, that he can take and he can twist and he can turn that if all they have is a mind knowledge of it. If all that they have is an ability, uh, see the devil can mess with that. Uh, the devil can take and twist uh, that, that mind knowledge. Uh, but what they did not consider about Daniel uh, and, and these other men, uh, I, I can never fully remember uh, their, their names before bondage. We've just called them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego so long. Uh, it should roll off uh, that we call him Hananiah and Mishael and, uh, and Azariah. That should flow easily uh, but it don't seem to because we've heard our whole life Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. But what they didn't consider when they took these three men is they look out and say man we got a problem. I don't want to go to the king with this problem but we got a problem. As brother Elijah would have put it in his scenario I guess you'd call it a bump in the road. Three guys Standing up. 
And maybe that guy that was there when Daniel can talk to him and talked to him and convinced him to let them just eat beans, maybe he was standing up there going, Get down. It's just for a moment. It's just for a minute. Just come on. You're going to mess everything up. This is a big day. They've erected an image. They're playing music. Uh, it was obviously a big deal for King Nebuchadnezzar. Just bow. Uh, and them boys are standing there, teenage boys, mind you, uh, standing there saying, nope, uh, I'm not bowing. Uh, I'm not bending. Uh, so they go to King Nebuchadnezzar and they said, he said, how's it going? Uh, oh, it went real good. But those three uh, Hebrew boys uh, that were, uh, hung out with Daniel, uh, for some reason, uh, they will not bow. They refuse to bow. Did they hear the music? Uh, I'm sure they did. It was pretty loud. Uh, they see the image. Uh, yeah, it's big and it's, well, it's, it's big. Uh, they would look at it and say, it's ugly maybe. Uh, but they looked at it and said, yeah, king, uh, we saw it. Uh, they saw it. They heard it. There's no doubt. But they do not bow. King said, bring them to me. Bring them to me. And he began to inquire of their reasoning. But what the problem was is they did not consider their desire to serve Jehovah God. So let's pick up in verse 13. King Nebuchadnezzar, that's easy for you to say, found out they didn't, did not bow. You know what? He was not happy. He was not happy. Verse 13 of chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No wonder we call them that. Over and over, he's calling them by those names of bondage. That's just what the enemy will do to you. He'll call you by your bondage name over and over again. That's who you think you are. They, they need to look at him and say, I ain't Shadrach. Amen. I ain't Meshach. I ain't Abednego. Devil may call, come and try to call you by that name that he's put on you. That he's tried to bind you with. Uh, but you need to look at it and say, you can call me Shadrach all you want to. You can call me uh, that name all you want to. But I, I still don't answer to that. I, I, I still don't go by that. I, I'm still Hananiah. I'm still Meshiah. I'm still Hananiah. Whatever uh, that the Lord has placed upon you. I know who I am. Uh, and so he said there, do not you serve my gods? No. Nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if they were smart Alex, which they weren't, they were wise and knowledgeable young men. If they were smart Alex, like me and my friends were coming up with, we said, duh. Right? I didn't bow. I obviously didn't take a knee for a reason. No, I just wanted to come see your pretty face in person. No, they were of the utmost respect in their response to the king. They knew where they were at. They knew their surroundings. Uh, they knew right where they were at. Uh, and, and so he, he looks uh, at them and he says, uh, do, do you not worship the golden image which I have set up? And in verse 15 he said, listen to this now, get this. Now if ye be ready, now if you be ready, maybe you wasn't ready, maybe you wasn't prepared. Uh, I, I've been playing baseball, sandlot baseball as a kid, and, and, and we get up there and the guy throws the ball, and, and he throws it, and we either swing and miss or, or, or take the pitch, and uh, we say, wait a minute, I wasn't ready, do it again. So maybe that's what Nebuchadnezzar was saying here. If, if, if maybe if you, you were ready. Maybe it caught you off guard. Uh, maybe there was a misunderstanding. Uh, he said, but now if you be ready, uh, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the image I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands. Now, if you be ready. So what he's asking them, the king was asking, are you ready? The king's version of being ready and their version of being ready is two different things. Peter had not wrote these words yet, but these boys are saying, yeah, we're always ready. That's why we're standing here right now having this conversation with you, King Nebuchadnezzar, because, yeah, we're ready. We were ready before, and we're ready again. Uh, we didn't bow before, we're not going to bow now. You can play music all night long, uh, set up all the images you want. Yeah, I'm ready. 
How about you? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. How about you? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, how about you, Middleburg, this morning? That not God. Uh, that God's not asking this question this morning. Uh, but the devil and all the forces of hell uh, is presenting a question to you today. Uh, are you ready? Uh, and what they're asking is, are you ready to bow? Uh, are you ready to bend? Uh, are you ready to give in? Uh, are you ready to worship the world's idols? Uh, are you ready to go after its lust and affections? Uh, are you ready to do these things? Uh, but we have an answer. Oh, yeah, I'm all always ready but not for what you think I'm always ready these young men were more than ready I always love this response I don't know which one of them did it but when I get to heaven I want to find out in verse 16 through 18 says Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said unto the king O Nebuchadnezzar we're not careful to answer thee in this matter now that's dignified that's respectful. That's understanding who they're talking to. They're talking to the king. They're not talking to some dude. This guy had ability and authority, and they showed him the utmost respect and said, Listen, king, we're not careful to answer to you in this matter. If be so, our God, whom we serve, they could have inserted in there, which is not you, but they didn't. They stayed respectful. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And He will. Somebody say that this morning. He will. It ain't God might. He will. I I love singing that song that tells us to have a little talk with Jesus and to make it right. And we pray and we, we sing that song in that one verse uh, or maybe the chorus that says, uh, when I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet Him there. I don't know how you sing it. I don't, I don't say hope. I don't. When I, when I sing that, no matter where I'm at, whether it's this church or I'm preaching revival or I'm visiting somewhere, if I'm in the choir or if I'm in the pew, uh, if I'm leading it, you'll hear me when I lead it. I, I do not lead it. I hope to meet Him there because I'm more in hope to meet Him there. Uh, I know I'm going to meet Him there uh, because I believe in praying until something happens. Uh, so He's saying here, uh, our God is not only able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, uh, the God whom I serve uh, is not only able to deliver me from you, uh, but the God that I serve will deliver Deliver me from you. Uh, the God that I serve is not only able to heal my body. Uh, how many raised your hand this morning and said, I have a need? Uh, not only is your God able uh, to minister to heal uh, and to bless and to move in that need, uh, but my God will uh, minister and move. Uh, we've got to have faith that's put to action uh, and say, Oh, I don't think God can do it. I, I know God will do it. Uh, I know that my God uh, is more than able to supply the need. Uh, so they said, He will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. Sister Mary said Wednesday night, well, what if he don't? What if he don't? When you take that kind of stand, Sister Joyce, say, I know God will heal me. I know God will deliver me. I know God will give me breakthrough. He will give me revelation. He will bring me out of this jump that I'm going through right now. This season, it's going to pass. I know My God will do it. What if He don't? They had an answer for that too because they were wise young men chosen for that very purpose. They were choice young men, knowledgeable with understanding and well able. And as they looked at them, asked this question, this king asked this question, they had an answer. They didn't know what Peter would write many years later. Always be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within you always I I preached a version of this in the Philippines titled it always ready this message actually originated when I was invited to preach a a youth uh, youth conference I guess it was retreat for Garden City they asked me to preach Saturday night and the theme of their 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 retreat was ready question mark ready uh, explanation mark ready period ready 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 and I broke down to three points. Probably the only time I've ever preached a three-point outline. But I broke down three points. Usually I'm just trying to make a point. That's where this thought originated from. But as I was praying for this service this morning, and thinking about this year of revelation and how we want a revelation, how we need a revelation, God's saying, are you ready? 
for your revelation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But are you ready for what it's going to take to get your revelation? Oh, wait, whoa, wait a minute. They said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, here it is. This is the way it plays out. You either bow, Elijah put it this way yesterday, you either bow or you burn. That's the only options the king gave them. Brother Elijah got pretty excited yesterday when he got to this point. He said, that was not their only options. <laughs> that was not their only options. So the devil told this is your only options. These are your only choices. He said, oh, no. What if he don't? Well, they considered that. This is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. When I get to heaven, I'm going to find out which one of these guys said that. I doubt it, but that's what I think now. But if not... Be it known unto thee. Be it known unto thee. When's the last time you put the devil on notice? We're too busy running from him, hiding from him, scared of him, backing down from him. Not these boys, they said, but be it known unto you. Let us want it to be known unto thee, O oh, king, in case he was mistaken who they were talking to. Still with respect, uh, we need to say, let me tell you something, uh, be it known unto thee. If you want to talk King James Version to the devil, go ahead. Uh, be it known unto thee, devil. Or just say, devil, this is what's up. <laughs> well, however you want to put it, I'm putting you on notice. All oh, people are scared to do that. But we stand, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth, Jesus declared. And he said, I give this power unto you. We stand under the power. If it's me standing there saying, let me put you on notice, devil, I'm in trouble. But I don't stand there on my authority or my ability or my strength. But I stand on the authority and the power and the strength. You shall receive power after the promise of the Father has come upon you. And you stand in that authority and you stand in that faith and you stand in the face of the fire and you stand in the face of the accusations and you stand in the face of whatever the enemy says. You're going to burn. You're going to whatever. You're going to die. You're going out. And you stand firm right in the face of that and say, be it known unto thee, devil. I'm not going to bow down unto you. I'm not going down. I may go down in a fire, but that's all right. I'm still not giving up and I'm not still not giving in. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God. Young people, you need to put the devil on notice. I ain't listening to that. I ain't watching that. I'm not going there. It's not happening. It's not the way I was raised. It's not the way I was taught. That's not what has been instilled. I know what you've been trying to instill within me. I know what you've been trying to twist and mess up in here. You tried to mess up in here, but you forgot about something that got way down deep inside here. You can mess with my head all you want. He said, I don't fear the one that can destroy the body, but I fear the one that can destroy the body and soul in hell. I don't have any fear of your God. I don't have any fear of what you're going to do to me, King. Heat up the fire, do whatever you want to do. This is standing ground. There's a time to bow. This isn't a time to bow. This is a time to stand. They said, be it known unto thee, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You know what? They didn't avoid the fire. After all of that? After such a bold stand as that? You mean the king didn't say, okay, boys. I just wanted to make sure. Devil doesn't work that way either. Now, you're going to make that bold proclamation. That, that preached real good just a few minutes ago. To stand up in the face of the devil and say, be it known, I'm putting you on notice, devil. But listen, don't try to be that bold if you're not willing to back it up. As I said last week, if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. Because we're not dealing with some patty cake devil. We're not dealing with, with, with some no authority, no power. Matter of fact, we're not dealing with a King Nebuchadnezzar or King Belshazzar. And all of their authority and all of their ability, all those wicked kings of the past, they have nothing compared to when you stand toe to toe. There's a real force. If not, everybody would be saved. 
If not, everybody would be holy. If not, we would not be uh, the minority in this generation. Uh, if not, the Islam religion would not be the fastest growing religion uh, in this great America. But the reality is it's a dark world led by a dark force uh, called Satan, uh, the deceiver, the supplanter, uh, the one that deceives uh, and the one that destroys uh, and the thief and the robber, whatever else you want to call him. Uh, he's a real devil and he's a real force uh, and he's powerful and mighty. Uh, he's the prince and the power of the air. Uh, but we still stand upon the authority and you can talk that talk all you want to but you better be able to back up with the talk with a desire and a passion to say I'm ready when I used to try to back talk my mama my stepdad would tell me son your mouth just wrote a check that your butt can't cash you ever heard that (laughs) maybe your daddy wasn't as simple as mine He said, you've done and messed up. And if we're not careful, we'll let our mouth uh, write a check uh, that we're not willing uh, and able uh, to cash uh, because we don't have nothing in the bank. We don't have nothing in the tank, Sister Gilda. We, we're, we're acting like uh, none of us going to set out on a journey across this country on an empty tank. We're going to at least make sure the tank's full when we start out. I hope we can keep it that way across the journey. So what we do uh, when we face the devil, uh, we don't come to him uh, with an empty account. Uh, but we know uh, I'm able to make this stand. I'm able to make this proclamation. Uh, it's not about where I'm at. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. It's not about where you brought me to. It's not about what you're telling me you're going to do to me. It's not about what the consequences of these actions are. So it's not about the season or the time or the point or the bondage that the enemy has seemed to wrap me up in and bring me in and think that he has me a prisoner of. And when all the world is surrounded, see, it wasn't just Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There were several others that bowed down. So it was not a matter of where they were at. Uh, uh, but it's a matter of where they have been. Uh, come on this morning to realize uh, it don't matter where you're at this morning. Uh, it doesn't matter what the devil's saying this morning. Uh, it don't matter where you're going through this morning. Uh, it don't matter where you're standing at this morning. Uh, but if you know where you've been, oh, that preached better than your amen in there. If you know where you've been, they say, I know where you brought me to. I know what you're trying to do here. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Young and old alike. I know what you're trying to do to me. Sometimes, Sister Diane sung it this morning, sometimes we get disheartened. We get disheartened and the trial comes our way. And our, I can't believe this is happening to me. You ever been there? I can't believe that after I took this stand, I'm still on my way into the fire. Here they are. They had said, we're not bound to you, O king. We're not going to do it. Our God's able to deliver us, and he will deliver us. But if not, we're still not going to bow. I took that stand, Sister Mary. Sister Gilda, I stood with that confidence said, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I made the statement. I made the, the proclamation. I stood and I testified to the church. I stood and I preached it on Sunday morning. Or I stood and I told that Sunday school class. Whatever the case may be. I stood in the face of the devil in his hot breath breathing down my neck and told him, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Do whatever you got to do. But even if you do it to me, I'm not bowing. I'm not giving in. I'm not giving up. And I'm still going into the fire. They did. Said in Daniel 3, 19 through 23. Have you ever wondered why? We're going to find out why in a minute. Those who know the story, you're already about ready to shout. You're already about to tell somebody, hold my Bible while I shout a while. Because I know why. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. The form of his vintage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than was wont to be heated. I stood. I talked the talk. 
I not only talked the talk, but I took the stand. Just three of us. Everybody else bowed. I, I doubt these boys were whispering this to each other, but it could have been. We stood and we're still going in the fire. Yeah, they heated it seven times hotter. We sure about this? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Because I know where we're at right now. Maybe they had to encourage one another. Two is better than one, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Maybe they needed to encourage each other. That, that's what we do week after week, isn't it? And we may come in and we say, are you sure that we can, we're, we can make it? That fire's hot. Oh, yeah, you can make it. Oh, yeah, we can make it when we bind together in unity. We're outnumbered, Chad, right? We're, out, we're outnumbered. We're, Hannah and I, we're outnumbered. Michelle, we're outnumbered. Well, it'll be all right, as Ryan may say. We're going in the fire. There's no other way around it. And it's seven times hotter. You know what? They were not given another option at this point. Are you sure? No, they had already made their call and election sure. They had already said, I'm ready. Why? Because they were ready because of what they said. Remember what they said? Let me read it to you again. I want to read it back in 16 through 18. They answered and said unto the king, verse 16, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. Verse 17 is where I want to see. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. Number one, he will serve, he will, is able to deliver us. That's knowledge. That's understanding. That's reading. I read it. He is able to deliver us. But number two, the second thing they said is experience. He will deliver us out of thy hand. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. I read it, so I believe it. I have knowledge of it, but I can tell you with a surety that he will because I've been there before. It might not have been this hard, might not have been this rough, might not have been this hot. Consequences may have not been this big. Uh, the stakes may have not been this high. But I've been this way before. Uh, and the same God uh, that brought me through then, He is going to bring me through now. Uh, so they're there. Uh, but it said, be, not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up, because we're ready. We said we're ready. And what we're ready for uh, is we're ready to see the knowledge of God. We're ready to see God do what He said He was going to do. How, how many of us has read the stories of what God would do? I don't know what Sister Gilda taught in here this morning. I don't, I'm not into the, the, to the adult Sunday school lesson. I've got my class that I'm teaching. Well, we were teaching on the naked cross. I don't know what she was teaching. We were talking about repentance. But what, what we hear that, whatever you got in, in your youth class today, whatever the message was, you, you hear that and you got a knowledge of that and you receive that and you're saying, wow, wow, can God really? And then you experience and you go through it and you say, well, yeah, God can really. So here they are, they're, they're waiting to, because they've made a proclamation, they've made a stand, and they went into the fire and said, Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, his visage changed against them. Where am I at? Verse 19, we'll start there. Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his visage changed against them. Spain commanded they should heat the furnace seven times. There's where we were at. Verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, their hats, their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Amen. Everybody stand. Let's be dismissed. No, because that's not the end of the story. If that's how it ended, if that is how the story ended, it would be a sad account, wouldn't it? These young men, they had such great desire to hold fast to their faith, and they stood for the God of heaven, and then they died. 
They burn up in the fire, in the furnace. It'd be a sad story, but you know what? It would still be a great story because of what they said in verse 18. Our God is able to deliver us, they said in verse 17. He will deliver us, they said in verse 17. But in verse 18, they let it be known. But if not, we'll die a martyr. If not, we'll burn, but we're still not bowing. They're not going to find me burn up like this. Say, come on, king. I, I-, I want out of here. No, that's not what's going to happen. If it would have ended that way, it would have been great. It would have been awesome to see that they stood. It would have been a great testimony of their faith. Uh, but look what happened when they got thrown into the flame. Who got thrown into the flame? Somebody answer. And that was their names of bondage. That was the names that King Nebuchadnezzar gave them. But there's sometimes that the only way that your true name is going to come forth is when you go through the fire. The, we say, I want revelation. I'm ready for revelation. But there, sometimes the only way you're going to get revelation is to get in the fire. Our general overseer wrote a song said, he's still in the fire and he walks in the flame. He'll be there to help you when you call upon his name. And they're saying, I want revelation. And we're saying, I want revelation this morning. And I'm ready for revelation. And I'm ready for an answer from God. But in the same voice, we say, I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand why I'm facing this. I don't understand why they've heated that fire up seven times hotter than ever before. I don't understand that the very fire that killed them is the fire that I have to face. I'm not getting this. Did you say you were ready for revelation? Did you say that your God is able? Did you say that you know your God was able and that your God will do it? And if not, you still was not going to bow? How many's made those kind of bold proclamations? Said, I'm not giving up. Be careful when you sing along with the radio. (laughs) I'm not giving in. It'll be worth it after all. There's some wonderful songs we sing along to, uh, but I don't just sing them because they're pretty. Uh, I sing along with the words, uh, and I try to get them as accurate as possible uh, because I mean every word of it. I I don't preach. Uh, Has your mom ever told you, I don't just talk to hear myself speak? I don't preach just to hear myself speak. Amy will tell you, I'm not a talkative person. She'll, she'll talk to me, try to conversate with me, and I'm a difficult person to carry on a conversation with sometimes. And, and it's just, but to understand that we don't just say it to say it. We say, when I say this is the year of revelation, it's because I've heard from God. I say this is the year of revelation. And it, it sounds great at the beginning of the year. The year of breakthrough sounded great at the beginning of the year. By the end of the year, you said, I wish this junk was over. My word. Breakthrough sounded great. He, he, he got us there. It was a bait and switch pastor pulled on us uh, of a block wall coming down. Uh, but then to find out what breakthrough entails. Uh, and God said breakthrough is so important that you're going to hold on to it this year. Uh, and to understand uh, that you've got to break through uh, to your revelation. Uh, so here they are and they're going to the fire. Uh, and you know why? Because of their testimony of faith, they went to the fire. And it was in that fire that their true names came forth. And you know what their true names meant? We know it's Hananiah, Mishael, and Hashaniah, I believe. But here's what they mean. The grace of the Lord. He that is the strong God, the Lord is a help. So they took their stand they went to the fire. King threw three young men that he named, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the fire. But when they got in the fire, oh, you're missing a chance to shout right there. But when they got in the fire, their true names showed up. Because it's when they got in the fire that the grace of the Lord showed up. It was when they got in the fire that he is the strong God showed up. 
It was when they got in the fire that the Lord is a help shine forth in that fire. We can sing about Him, shout about Him, talk about Him on Sunday and Wednesday and before and tell everybody how great is our God. Sister Mary can get up here and sing how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And we can join in and sing with her how great is our God. But we really don't know how great our God is until we're not only faced with the fire but we're in the fire and it's in the fire that the Lord revealed unto him our grace is sufficient for you I am the Lord that helps you I am the Lord that strengthens you I am your very present help in time of trouble I am your refuge from every storm I am the strong and mighty tower that you can run to it was not until they got into the fire that they received a revelation Why didn't he show up when they were standing? Oh, he was there. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Why wasn't he there in that meeting with the king? Oh, he was there. But he has a purpose that we don't always understand. Don't ever think that you stand alone because God hadn't spoke up. Or you don't see his physical image. And you think, you're oh, man, I'm standing here for you, Lord. Where you at? Be a good time for you to chime in. I was thinking on the way to church this morning. I know I'm getting long winded with a song. It says, I would have thought by now you would have reached down. You ever been in you ever been there? I've been there. That's why I, I share it with you this morning. That's why it struck me. Out of that whole song, that's the only part I really can tell you verbatim the words. I would have thought by now you would have reached down. Has anybody ever said that to God? Just be honest. I have. My hand's up. Anybody ever prayed like that? God, I would have thought by now the threat is the fire. Hello? Right? I would have thought by now you would have reached down, the songwriter says. But it's still raining. He's going through a storm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, I'd have thought by now you'd have reached down. And they done heated that baby seven times hotter than before. They put my coats on. They're tying, they're tying my hands, Lord. I'm, this is really happening. You ever, you ever been in those situations? I've been in car wrecks before, a bunch of them. And it happens in slow motion. That car spinning. You're like, is this really happening? Boom! Yep. I'm really going to go through this. Why? We can question the why, or we can realize that it's there that we're going to receive our revelation. He didn't show up, it seemed, when they stood. He didn't stand up in their meeting with the king. But he did show up. But through the grace of the Lord, the strongness and strength and help of the Lord shine forth. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, as he looks into the furnace, the question is back to the king, are you ready to see what you're fixing to see? Are you ready to see what you're fixing to see? Are you ready to see the grace of the Lord show up as strength and help for his children? How many wants a world that puts us in bondage, a system the world system today, not talking about government, not talking Democrat, Republican, none of that. Just talking about a system, a worldly system that takes and tries to hold us in bondage, that walks in darkness, that thinks that that's the only way, that tries to bind us and brainwash us and pull us into that system. Are you ready for them to see the grace of the Lord? Are you ready for them to see the strength, the power of your God? Are you ready for them to see His help? See, it has to be more than something we experience on Sunday morning together. I want the world to be able to look on and see. Man, God's grace. God's strength. God's power. So here He is. He's looking in. And He's asked this question. Are you ready to see what He's going to do? I want the world to be able to see what my God. Not only what I said my God would do. My God's going to show up. He's coming. 
He's coming. He is not going to forsake me all the way to the fire. All the way to the point that it burned the ones that put it in it. That faith. Bound by the ropes and all their garments. They wanted everything to familiarize with these boys. Put it on them. Every coat they got, every hat, whatever. All that belongs to them. Burn it up. The king looked down in that fire. And what amazes me about what he saw. Let me read it and then I'll tell you what amazes me about what he saw. Then, verse 24, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound? You can't miss that word. Bound? Into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True. True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see. Get this, we want, we want a revelation that speaks to us. Now, we can't get caught up in this year of Revelation and say, I need a revelation that's going to make me feel better about who I am. I, I need a revelation that's going to make me a better me and make me a... It's important to be a better representation of Christ. But we've got to understand something. It ain't about me. To understand the revelation may not necessarily be for you, uh, but the revelation uh, is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, John said, uh, I can't tell you whether it was in uh, the body or where it was at. He said, I don't know what was going on, uh, but all I can tell you is I saw the Lord high uh, and lifted up. Uh, I saw His power. I saw His. Uh, I saw the revelation was revealed unto me, uh, the revelation of John. Uh, and that revelation of John is for all the reader. Uh, and the king said, uh, Lo, I see... Four men walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. You know what the immediate thought would be there? Did Daniel go ahead and get in there with them? Did Daniel join them? Maybe the king was wiping his eyes. Is that Daniel? No, that ain't Daniel. He said, we threw three bound. But he said, I see four men loose. I told you, paid special attention to that word bound, but pay more attention to the word loose. I thought y'all were Pentecostal. <laughs> loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They're still in the fire, folks. They're still in the fire. But they said, My God is able, my God will. But if he don't, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to bend. I don't know what happened, but all I know, uh, I don't know if the ropes burn off. Uh, I don't know if the Lord untied them. Uh, I don't know if they pulled out their pocket knife. Uh, I don't know what happened, uh, but they made a proclamation that said, uh, I'm not going to bow, uh, and I'm not going to bend, uh, and I am not going to be bound uh, by your will and your way. Uh, and God made a way. When you make that kind of stand for God, uh, He's going to make a way. Uh, but what we have to see here uh, is they were still in the midst of the fire but they were not bound and they were not bound but they were loose and they were walking listen you may still be in the fire right now but it's all right because the king says I don't see three I see four listen church get this if you got nothing else you may be right in the fire right now but be ready to know that the devil does not see three he sees four the devil does not see just you but he knows that God is there with you. And he has given you your revelation. And he says, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Because of the faith of these three men, that king saw this. Verse 26, I'm trying to hurry, not really. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. And spake and said, heat it seven times hotter. Is that what he said? No, I was seeing if he was following along. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you servants of the most high God. Come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. 
the princes, governors, and captains, and the kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whom bodies uh, the fire had no power, nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, uh, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. That's powerful, folks. Then kept Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language would speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. Are you ready for your revelation? But more important, are you ready for this world to receive a revelation of Jesus Christ? They not, may not see Him when you take your stand. They might not see Him when you take a great stand against authority and refuse to bow and bend. They say, oh, well, that's bold and courageous. But I guarantee you, when they put you in that fire, He's going to show up. And He's going to give revelation. But who received revelation here in this story? Nebuchadnezzar, the princes and the governors and all the people received the revelation. He pronounced it more than once, the Almighty God whom they serve. That's the goal, folks. That's the goal. It's not about get me out of this. It's not about my best life. It's not about, yeah, I need a revelation of how I'm going to get that new car. Or I need a revelation of how I'm going to get a bigger house. Or God, how are you going to get me into that promotion? I've been eyeballing that corner office. Or that position. Or that place. That was not on Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego's radar. They just said, I know that I've been brought into this place. And I don't belong here. I don't belong here. So I'm just going to stand. Because I'm not supposed to bow down to that. So I'm going to stand. You know the consequences come? Yeah. I'm standing anyway. Why? Because I want my life to bring glory to God. This is what brings joy to heaven. The joy of the Lord, we say, is our strength. And you know what the joy is? All of heaven rejoices over one soul that comes to a revelation that he is God. I want an atheist to be able to say, his God is the Lord God Jehovah. I want the one that is out there that is oppressed and beaten and tormented Christians to turn their hearts to be able to say, he is the Lord God Jehovah. There is no other God. I want to see all the kingdoms of this world fall. And I want, I know there's coming a day when it's all said and done, there's only one king that's going to stand. But our goal, it should be that they will receive a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the desire, isn't it? For the lost to be saved. If that's not your goal, you got the wrong goal this morning. I want lost souls to be saved. Too many times we're praying, Lord, take them out. <laughs> Wipe them out, God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, through all of this, I want them to see Jesus. I want them to see Jesus. And Nebuchadnezzar saw Jesus that day. Anybody can say anything they want to. Any Bible scholar can say whatever they want to. But I'm the Bible scholar in the room this morning. They saw Jesus. Nebuchadnezzar saw Jesus that day. He called him an angel, but he saw Jesus. And when you go through the fire... They're going to see Jesus too. In closing this morning, are you ready for your revelation? 
But more importantly, are you ready for their revelation? The year of revelation, I'm ready for them to receive a revelation. And it may mean that I have to go through a fire that's been heated seven times hotter than ever before. Just know something. You're not going to burn. He promised us. He prophesied that in Isaiah. He said, you'll go through the fire and you shall not be burned. You're not going to be burned. It feels hot. I'm sure they felt how hot that fire was. But it didn't touch them. God showed up. So are you ready to do whatever it takes? Go through whatever you have to go through. Take the stand. Suffer the consequences of that stand, even if it takes you through a fire that's seven times hotter than you've ever been through before. Not so you can receive a revelation, but that they can receive a revelation of Jesus Christ. The very one that puts you in the fire, that they'll proclaim He is God. See, before this, Nebuchadnezzar said, He is God. He had made Himself a God, made an image, erected an image. God can still churn hearts, but it may mean you have to go through the fire. Are you ready? Are you ready? Some of you are not as ready as you was at the beginning of the service. But are you always ready? Sister Gilda, if you'll help me close this morning. Hebrews 10, 23, as you stand with us today. Does anybody have a profession of faith this morning? Anybody got faith? You profess faith? Wait, that means all right. Got a profession of faith. And what is that profession of faith this morning? It's what Peter said. He said, what do men say of me? Well, some say you're John the Baptist, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. People say a lot of stuff, right? But he said to the disciples, who do you say? What is your profession of faith? Who do you say that I am? What do you have faith in? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So we have a profession of faith this morning. He is the Christ. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a profession of faith, didn't they? I know that our God is able. That he will deliver us from the fiery furnace. But if not, I'm not going to bow to you. Why? Because I know who God is. I believe God. And whatever your profession of faith is, it should be that, that he is the Christ, son of the living God. The writer of Hebrews tells us this in chapter 10, verse 23. I believe I had just do something similar to this a few services ago, but there's that profession of faith, right? Take hold of it. Do it. Take hold of it. And listen to what he says. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Told us what to do. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. You're, you're holding on to it and the devil throws a fiery dart at you. Well, it's a shield of faith. Boom. Right? It's just what you need in that situation. Don't waver just because the devil's coming at you. Everything that you need is found in your faith. So without wavering, this is why. For He is faithful that promised. Do you believe that this morning? He is faithful. Not only is my God able, my God will. Not only is my God able, my God will. Doubt tried to slip in. Fire got hot. I didn't know what God was doing. He showed up. I thought, man, He came to help me. But then I heard King Nebuchadnezzar's voice come in. This is the testimony of these boys. Calling us out and proclaiming the God He said did not exist. Where is this God that you talk about is declaring our God to be the only God? Something wonderful happened. Because I was ready. And something wonderful will happen if you're ready. God will do mighty things and great things and will use you for His glory if you're ready. 
Oh, I'm ready for my name and bold lights. No, 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 no. I'm ready for whatever, whenever, however it takes for somebody who does not know that He is God to be able to proclaim He is God. I'm ready for them to receive a revelation. We're living in a world that needs a revelation of Jesus Christ. No more so than ever before. We need somebody to turn the light on. We need somebody to hold fast the profession of their faith without wavering because they know that He's faithful that promised. Are you that somebody this morning? Will you with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say this morning, Oh, I'm ready. Whatever it costs, I'm ready. Wherever I have to go, whatever it takes, I'm ready. I don't want them to die lost. But I want them to hear and know the name of Jehovah God. Until the whole world hears. Are you ready for that kind of revelation? I thought revelation was something about me, Pastor. Sorry, I misunderstood you. If that's you, just sit down this morning. But if you fully understood that revelation is all about a revelation of Jesus Christ and a better understanding of His perfect will, not only for our life, but for this world and how we can reach this world, I want you to meet me in this altar this morning. I want you to step out and say, I'm ready. I'm ready. No matter what fire, flood, storm, situation, or circumstance, because I know that he may, I may feel like I'm bound there, this is going to be a moment that He's going to show up and I'm going to be loose and walking with Him in the midst of the fire and He's going to reveal to me why I was in the fire to start with. Why I had to go this far. Why I had to experience so much agony and pain and frustration. Why did it have to go this far, Lord? He's going to reveal it to me as He walks with me in the midst of my fire. Heavenly Father, many have stepped out across this house this morning said I'm ready for a revelation that will bring a lost world to you I'm ready for a revelation that will cause the very ones that's put me in this fire to see that not only are you my God you are the God you're not just a God but you're the only God that is able to deliver your people have your way the lives of these this morning that says, Lord, I'm ready, always ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within me. And I'm going to hold fast to the profession of that faith without wavering because I know my God is faithful as promised. Help us around these altars right now, Jesus.